Mabani Bible Baptist Church. It's a blessing to be with you all today. And um, uh, let's start off by closing our eyes and uh, pray before them. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you for this time that we have to be together to learn from you. Lord, I'd like to pray during this time, Father, that you may speak to our hearts. Pray, Father, that you may work in our hearts and use your spirit to give us understanding. I pray these things, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, so uh, today I'd like for us to look at a, a topic entitled, How to Follow Jesus. How to Follow Jesus. And um, once again, uh, this is one of those things which seem easy at first until you really think about it. Um, you know, one thing I, I love about the Word of God, ever since I got saved, is it's so straightforward. It's so straightforward for all the things that God wants us to do, for all the things that He wants us to obey. He's very simple and straightforward about it. He, he, all, the, all the things which are uh, stuff that the Lord wants us to do, which are important to our lives, will be spelled out in the Bible word for word. It's not something that you'll have to interpret. It's not something that you'll have to have, have a vision in order for you to understand it. No, it's just there. It's simple. It's, it's out in the open. And uh, that is why the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Everything that he wants us to do, everything that he wants us to obey is very clear in the word of God. But uh, there, there are things like, uh, for example, as I said, I've enjoyed this ever since I've been saved. That when I read the Bible, it just makes sense. The Spirit of God gives, gives me understanding. And if you've been saved, the Spirit of God gives you understanding too whenever you read the Bible. But even things, things such as being born again, uh, you know, all those questions, what does it mean to be born again? If, if you grew up going to church, it's one of those questions that sound easy until you try to answer the question. And then when you, when you try to answer the question and then you start, you know, going down rabbit holes and, you know, you never really have a straightforward answer. Why does the Bible has a straightforward answer to that question? So even with how to follow Jesus Christ, it's one of those things where it sounds so easy until you really think about it. How, how, how do you follow Jesus Christ? Once again, you could go down a long rabbit hole about that. But today, I would like for us to see if we can get a more direct and straightforward and simple answer to that question. So, let's start off by looking at the word follow, which I believe is the key, right? It's the key in this statement, to follow Jesus Christ. So, the key word there is follow. So, the word follow, let me read for you some, some interesting definitions from the dictionary. So, the word follow means to go after or behind. To walk behind in the same direction. Okay? That's easy. I, I believe that's all. That, that's what comes to our mind first when we think of the word follow. But uh, here, here's, another, here's another definition. It's to imitate, to copy, or to follow the pattern or model. Okay? Here's another definition. It's to obey, to observe, to practice. Doesn't that sound familiar? You remember when we learned about observe to do? Well, guess what? To follow means to obey, to observe, or to practice. And it all, the dictionary also says it's to act in conformity to, to conform, to conform to. If you are following someone, you are conforming to their way. And then the last definition is it's, uh, also quite simple and straightforward. It's to be led or guided by. So now when it comes to that phrase, in light of the definitions we've just read, when, when you think of that phrase, how to follow Jesus, we'll be looking at basically when you follow Jesus Christ, it's all about letting him lead you. He goes before you and you follow after him in the same direction. We're talking about obeying him, following him is part, of, well, let me say obeying is part of following him. To obey him, to practice what he practices, to observe, to do what he is doing. And, uh, and also it's to conform 
to Jesus Christ's way. If you remember uh, what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it speaks about how we should not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So the Bible says we shouldn't conform to this world, but who we should conform to is Jesus Christ. And it's going to be one of the two. As you live your life on a day-to-day -day basis, it's going to be one of the two. It's either you'll conform to the world or you'll conform to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Who is it that you conform to it in your life? You can't conform to both, fortunately. Uh, I'll actually say fortunately because that makes things simple. It's either you're for him or you're against him. But uh, here, here's also uh, something that's very important. Now, this is not, uh, this wasn't part of the definitions I found in the dictionary, but I want to add this to the dictionary. It's, it's, it's not, that sounds, that sounds very boastful, right? <laughs> no, no, I'm not that good in English. I can't add to the dictionary. But I want to add to the definition, right? So it's not just, um, you know, to, to, to follow in the direction that Jesus Christ is going. It's not just, um, to, to do what he says you should do. But what I want to add to it is the heart element. It's about the heart. Because, you know, you can't do something but not have your heart be in it. What makes all the difference with God is, is your heart in it. Is your heart there. That's what's important. Even when you speak to God, the, here, here's a very interesting question. It came from Sunday school. Uh, your kids are learning and they're asking very good questions. So one of the kids at Sunday school today asked them, um, how, how do people that can't talk communicate with God? Because we're, we're talking about how following God, one of the things that you do in following God is to pray. Jesus Christ prayed a lot. So for following his example, we ought to pray also. And he asked, how do people that can't talk pray to God? And then, and then the answer is, you don't have to say the words in order for you to communicate with God. God can see your heart. Yes. And he, he, he looks at the heart, and even with the words that you say, the words that you say, first of all, come from your heart. If, if you're being honest. Those words come from your heart, which is why the Bible says that God knows what you're going to say before you even say it. That's why the Bible teaches that. How can God know what you're about to say before you say it? That's because those words started off in your heart and God saw them when they were in your heart before you ever said anything. So the people that can't speak, they speak to God in their hearts and God hears those prayers. So it's all about the heart. The heart makes all the difference because you can't also say things that don't come from your heart. You know how, uh, for example, in, in primary school, uh, we used to recite the, the, the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer every day. Our Father who art in heaven and so on and so on. So we used to recite that every single day. And I'll tell you that when I was in primary school, I could recite that prayer without meaning even a word of it from my heart. It was just custom. It was just, you know, you knew what you had to say. You knew which word came after the other. And it never really came from the heart. So that prayer is vain. That type of a prayer is vain. God is not going to receive that type of a prayer. And if you are going to follow him and do, and, and do what he says, quote unquote, but your heart is not there, God is not going to accept that. With God, it's all about the heart. Let, let me give you another example. With giving an offering. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your money. He owns everything in this world. The money that you give to God will not make a difference to his net worth. Okay? <laughs> God doesn't need your money, but what is, he, what is he seeking for when you give an offering? He's seeking for your heart. So, uh, uh, as I said there, we need to um, think about that heart element when we think about following Jesus Christ. Having said that, let's turn to Luke chapter 9. just want to read one verse from Luke chapter 9 for you. In Luke chapter 9, we have uh, what the, usually this, this passage is referred to as the would-be followers. 
the would-be followers. Why are they called the would-be followers? Because here we see a group of people, or three people in particular, who would come to Jesus Christ, or who Jesus Christ would tell them to follow Him, and then they would make excuses. Oh, let me first do this, let me first do that. So they would be followers, but they have this excuse. They want to do this first. But look at what Jesus Christ says to them in verse 62. Luke chapter 9, verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, or let me, let's read what this particular person had said in verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we're looking at people who would follow Jesus Christ. And this person says, oh Lord, I'll follow you, but let me first do this. Let me go first go say goodbye to the people at home. Sort of like saying, oh, and, and I've actually uh, met people that, that said this. It was mostly when I was in high school. That would say that, oh, you know, I'll get saved later in life because I still need to. I still need to experience this and that and that. So it, it's sort of like they're saying, let me first do this for the last time before I get saved. And now, if, if, if you actually look at the attitude there, you see that that person's heart is not in following Jesus Christ. And, and here Jesus Christ responds to that. He says, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If you're going to put your hand on the plow, but you're still looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. It's almost like uh, with... Um, you remember the story about Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah? Him and his wife, the angel told them that they need to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. And when they walk away from it, they shouldn't look back. What was the whole idea with them not that they shouldn't look back? If, if they are walking away from this place, I, I, I'm sure you've experienced this before. Maybe have you gone to visit a place, maybe you're on vacation somewhere. Or maybe you have visited a, a, a relative or anywhere where you really had a lot of fun. And then when you leave the place, you just look back one last time. Usually what does that mean? It means your heart is still there. You really had a good time. You're like, let me just look at it one last time. So even with walking away from sin, the thing about Sodom and Gomorrah is it was a place of sin. Their sin was uh, full, if I can put a phrase it in that way. The, the, and it was homosexuality, which was really uh, on the upswing in, that, in those nations. And God hates sin, so he destroyed it. But in them having to leave that place, it symbolized them having to leave a place of sin. And if, if their heart was still there, then you see how that's a problem. So even with following Jesus Christ, you need to come to a place where you are willing to leave your sin. Your heart is no longer there. You want to leave your sin. You want Jesus Christ now, which is why if you are if saying you want to follow Jesus Christ, but you still love your sin so much that you have to look back then you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's a hard thing. No one is forcing you to be saved. No one is forcing you to follow Jesus Christ. So if you feel that you, you, you're still looking back as if you're being forced to do what, you, what, you, what you're doing, then it's invalid. God's not going to accept that. God wants your heart to be there. Have you, have you, have you seen how, with, um, for example, the example that I just gave with Lot and his wife, they, they were leaving. They were doing what God said they should do. But Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pill of salt. So now, that, 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 that goes to show you what I'm trying to emphasize here is you could be doing what God says you should do. But if your heart is not there, God will not accept it. God wants you to obey Him. God wants you to follow Him as He leads. But He also wants your heart to be there, to be involved in all of this. So um, 
Now, uh, a, a phrase which we see uh, a lot um, in, in the Bible, let's turn to Luke chapter 9, in fact we're already there, in Luke chapter 9 verse 23. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, and he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So let's look at what Jesus Christ is saying here and analyze. By the way, Jesus Christ said this phrase quite often take up your cross and follow me. But anyway, uh, let's look at, let's analyze what Jesus Christ is saying. He says, if any man will come after me. So you see that phrase, come after me, doesn't it sound familiar? It comes from the definition of follow. To come after or behind. If any man will come after me. So here we're looking at now how to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is about to give you the answer to the question. If any man will come after me, here's what he has to do. First thing, he says, let him deny himself. If you want to follow me, if you want to come after me, the first thing you need to do is deny yourself. So what does it mean to deny self? Well, whenever I think of that phrase, to deny self, this is the other phrase that comes to my mind. Not my will, but thine. That's what it means to deny yourself. We all have our own desires. We all have our, what, what we want. We all have our own ambitions and everything. But when you have truly denied yourself, when you have truly surrendered yourself to Jesus Christ, then you would have come to a point where you, where you are able to say, Lord, this is what I want. And also you need to have that type of a relationship with God, especially if you have been saved. Whereby you can even communicate this to God and say, you know what, Lord, this is what I want. I'll be honest. This is what I want. But I know that this is not what you want for me. So, Lord, I submit myself to you. Not my will, but thine. I deny myself. I de I'm denying myself of what I want just so that I can follow your will. So once again, denying yourself is following Jesus Christ. What is a good example? Where is a good example of Jesus Christ denying himself? Well, I believe that the whole, the whole idea of Jesus Christ coming down to earth was denying himself. Remember that Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus Christ existed even before he was born here on earth. He was in heaven in a place where there is no sin, in a place where he is glorified. But he denied himself. I, I do believe that Jesus Christ would have preferred to be in heaven and stay there. But he denied himself. He came down to earth. He took upon himself a flesh. He took upon himself the form of a servant. He made himself the lowest of the lowest. He really took himself down to a low place. He denied himself of all the things that he would have preferred. Why? So that he could come and die for our sins. And then also, you know, he came here, he lived on earth, he started his ministry and everything. But then just before he was crucified, which is where, where I got that phrase from, not my will but thine. When he went to pray, just, just shortly before he got, he got uh, imprisoned, if I can put it that way. He went to pray. And that's why the Bible says that he, he was in so much agony that his sweat drops were, of, were as of blood. And as he was praying, then he was thinking about the cup of sin that he was about to take in. He was thinking about the sin that he was about to take upon himself. And he didn't want to do that. He is God, and we have looked at it in, 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 in the past, about how much God hates sin. You remember when we, when we read in Habakkuk about how he's of pure eyes to behold evil. God hates sin, and Jesus Christ is God, which means Jesus Christ hated sin just as much as God did. But, but as he was praying to God, he, 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 he once again said to God the Father, Lord, I don't want this. I don't want to do this. 
Is there any way that this cup can pass over me? I, I don't want to take this sin upon me. In my flesh, I don't want to do this. However, not my will, but thine. That is denying yourself. And, 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 and if you want to come to Jesus Christ, you need to recognize and you need to realize that he is, we've, we've looked at this, that you have looked at this when uh, we were studying about calling upon the name of the Lord, right? Calling upon the name of the Lord, you saw how the word Lord means master. So if you want to follow Jesus Christ, you need to first of all realize that he is the master. You need to submit to him. Whatever he says goes. And uh, of course, you cannot speak about denying yourself without going to repentance. You need to repent. You need to change your mind about going the way, about following your own way. You need to change your mind about that and say, I don't want to continue following my own way. I want to follow God's way. And that's where repentance and faith become uh, the, the, the two sides of the same coin. Because as humans, we, we want to be in control of what happens in our lives. We, we want to be in control of, of what we do. We want to be in control of, of where we are. We, we, we want to control everything in our lives. But it takes faith for a person to give up their lives. Take note of that. We'll get to that shortly. It takes faith for you to let go, to give up your life and say, Lord, you be in charge of it. I'm not in control anymore. You are. That takes repentance. And uh, uh, just shortly before we move on to the next thing, I want to, I want us to read from Mark. In Mark chapter 10, I'll just read there quickly because of time. Mark chapter 10, verse 21. This is a, a familiar story. It's about the rich young ruler. And I just want to read to you what Jesus Christ said to the rich young ruler. In verse 21, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up thy cross, and follow me. The first, the first thing that blesses me about this verse is it starts off by saying, and Jesus Christ, be, uh, Jesus Christ uh, beholding him, loved him. You know, that, that is one thing. When Jesus Christ looks at you today, whether you're saved or lost, here's one thing that is true. When Jesus Christ looks at you, he just loves you. He loves you. And he doesn't want to see you perish. He doesn't want you to see you be judged for your sins in hell. When he looks at you, he looks at you with compassion. And, he, and when he looks at you with this compassion, he wants to help you. He wants to give you advice on how you can avoid destruction in hell. So he says to this rich young ruler who had a lot of self-righteousness, he says to him, that, um, and and you, you, you see how what Jesus Christ said to him is similar to what we've read in, in Luke chapter 9. Uh, so he says to him, uh, there's one thing that you lack. You need to go and sell all your things and give to the poor. Then come, take up your cross and follow me. So you see how this phrase is similar to the one in, in, in Luke chapter 9. The only difference is the deny yourself is not there. Why is the deny yourself not there? It actually is there. But all Jesus Christ did here is he described what it means for him in particular to deny himself. For this rich young ruler, for him in particular, for him to deny himself meant for him to sell all his riches and give to the poor. Why? Because that, that was he, what he was ambitious about. He was ambitious about making a lot of money and having a lot of possessions and having all well, this is sort of, you could say, this is what he was working for his whole life to gather up all these treasures here on earth. This is what defined him. And, and really, it's a sad thing if the only thing that defines you is money. That, that shows how little you have in life. 
But this person, he, what defined him was the money and the possessions that he had. So Jesus Christ said, you have to deny yourself. How do you, how do you deny yourself? You need to take all your riches, sell them, and give them to the poor. And then, after you've denied yourself, you can come, take up your cross, and follow me. So that's the, that's the first step. Is, uh, if you want to follow Jesus Christ, how do you follow Jesus Christ? First step is to deny yourself. Second thing, if we go back to Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus Christ said that you should take up your cross. And in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, If any man will come after me, let him deny, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So, there are, only, there are only two things that you need to do to follow Jesus Christ. The first thing is to deny yourself. The second thing is to take up your cross. Take up your cross. So, what does it mean to take up your cross? And uh, this will be the second last thing we look at. So, if, if, if Jesus Christ says, take up your cross and follow me, what he is saying is where I, where I got to, the place where I arrived at is where you have to go to. Remember when you looked at the definition of follow? It's to, it's to go behind or after to in the same direction. Remember that from the, the, the definition, right? It speaks about the same direction. If we are following Jesus Christ in the cross, we need to go the same direction. So where did the cross lead Jesus Christ? Led him to his death. The cross is where Jesus Christ died. Which means that if Jesus Christ is saying, take up your cross and follow me, what he is saying is, you need to go to your death. You need to die too. But here's, here's something uh, interesting about uh, how Jesus Christ died on the cross. The way that Jesus Christ died on the cross, uh, because of the time I won't read, I won't, I won't have us turn there, but it's in John chapter 10 verse 18, it speaks about how no man took his life from him. He laid down his life. He did it willingly. No, no one killed Jesus Christ. No one has the power to do that. The only reason why Jesus Christ died on the cross is because he willingly laid down his life. And he said because he laid it down, he was able to take it back up again three days and three nights later. But here's the key thing. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he laid down his life willingly. So even with you, if you want to follow Jesus Christ, that whole thing of denying yourself, that whole thing of re repenting of your sins, the whole thing of, of you dying and giving your life to Christ, no one can take that from you by force. You need to do that willingly. You need to willingly lay down your life for Jesus Christ. That is, when, that, that is what it means to take up your cross, mm -hmm. is to be crucified with Him. As Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. You need to be crucified with him. You, you're not dying literally, but you're dying in, in terms of who you are. The person who, for example, on the 7th of March in 2011, the Bundy that, that people knew died. And they've never seen him ever since. The way I used to talk, the things I used to do, the things I used to love, the things, the conversations I used to have, no one ever saw that again after the 7th of March in 2011. So that, that, that is the type of death that the Lord is looking for if you will follow Him. But then here's, here's, here's where it also gets interesting. He says daily. You see that in Luke chapter 9. Verse 23. He says, take up his cross daily. It's not even a one-off thing. But every, every, every day, well, if it starts, it starts from the point when you get saved. You lay down your life for Christ. 
But every day leading after that, every single day you need to be crucifying yourself. You need to come to the place where you lay down your life willingly for Jesus Christ. Every single day you have to come to a point where in, in your day-to-day -day decisions, you have that attitude that I am willingly going to lay down my life. I'm willingly going to lay down my will before the Lord. I'm willingly going to deny myself every day. Deny my will and follow the Lord's will every single day. And that is the life of a saved person. And, I, and I'll tell you this, well, you know, you, you may hear this and it, it sounds bad. Oh, I, that, that sounds like a stressful life, you know, that sounds like a, it's not an enjoyable life where every day you just don't do what you want and you have to every day do what, what God says you should do. I, I'll tell you something from experience that I am glad that I don't have to follow my will. I am glad because how many times have you thought, like really been convinced that what you're about to do is right and only realize later that it's wrong? Only Jesus Christ, only God knows what is good. Only God knows what's the best decisions, the best choices for your life. Only He knows. So I would rather live a life where I'm, where, where I'm yielding my will every day to a person who is wiser than me, to a person who knows the future, to a person who knows what is right and what is good. I would prefer that. And just to give you a, a one minute recap of, of, of something that happened after I got saved, uh, I, I used to want to be a doctor. Like every, every, I think almost everyone wants to be a doctor at some point in their lives, right? I, I used to be very convinced that, you know, I, I want to be a doctor. This is the right decision for me. And, and, and the, the Lord made it in such a way that I was already saved at that time when I, went, when I had to make um, the, the decision as to what I was studying in university. And I, I applied for medicine, but the Lord made it in such a way that I didn't qualify for that course by 1%, by 1% in one of my modules. I didn't qualify, at first I was broken by that. But then I qualified for computer science, which you guys know is what I ended up studying. But here, here, here's where it got really weird. The, in my first year of studying computer science, I was forced to do microbiology, which is the same module that people doing their first year in medicine do. So I was in class studying computer science. I was in class with people studying medicine as well for one of my modules. And that module, microbiology, I hated it so bad. I, I, it, was, it was a nightmare. It was really a nightmare. And I'll tell you that on that day, after I passed the course and didn't have to do biology ever again, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you I didn't end up qualifying for medicine. I would have been miserable. And that's why I am glad that I can yield my will to God. He, he even knows me better than I know myself. I thought I'd enjoy medicine. He knew I wouldn't enjoy that. He knew it wasn't what he wanted me to do. So we need to be yielding our will every day um, to the Lord. Let's close uh, in reading Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 says, And he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. And, and, and that's what it boils down to. If you are not going to take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ, he said, those are his words in, in Matthew chapter 10. He said, if you will not take up your cross and follow after him, you are not worthy of him. If you will not deny yourself, if you will not take up your cross, you are not worthy of him. And, 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 what, and here's, here's what I wanted us to get to, which is why this is the conclusion. 
The word Christian means to be like Christ. Denying oneself is something that Christ did. Taking up a cross and laying down your life willingly is something Christ did. To follow him is to go the direction he's going. To follow him is to, to imitate or to copy or to follow a pattern. Is to do what he did. So if you, are, if you don't have the heart to deny yourself, if you don't have the heart to take up your cross and follow him, you're not even worthy to call yourself a Christian.